Hey guys, uh, Tony here. Um, this I am here with my buddy Jeff Harris, and we are excited because I decided that um, this week I wanted to switch things up a little bit and not just have me talk at the camera. I thought it would be cool if we uh, I actually wanted Jeff to speak, and then he threw the ball back at me and said, "Well, let's actually have a conversation." And so I tried to avoid getting off camera, but he wouldn't let me. So like this time. <laughs> Um, we are going to have a conversation about something that is a big deal to both he and I. Um, it's something that we have struggled with. It's something that we've seen failures in and a lot of victory in as well. And um, I'm just excited to, to talk with you and share with you. So I'm going to read a passage of scripture um, that uh, uh, I fired away at Jeff a couple weeks ago. And um, we both feel like this is a good way to just kind of start off this conversation. And we're going to be talking about anxiety today. And um, a number of you have talked to me or Jeff about the ways you experience anxiety. Um, and the cool thing is, is like, even though this book is 2000 years old, uh, it has stuff to say about things that are more relevant today than ever before. And so um, this is Jesus in Matthew six, starting in verse 25. Um, and he said, this is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or enough to drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and see how they grow. They don't uh, work and they don't make their clothing, yet Solomon and all of his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for these wildflowers that they are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have such little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying what will we eat and where will we drink and what will we wear. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all of your needs. Seek first the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today is trouble enough. Amen. All right, so I, how are we going to format this, I, Jeff? I, well, I mean, you know, anxiety, like you said, anxiety <laughs> is one that's super important. It's definitely one that I haven't solved, you know, on my, yeah. <laughs> it's not one that I've solved myself. I still deal with it. Um, and I think that passage, that passage provides a, an excellent logical argument against mm. um, anxiety. Um, I know my emotions are still fickle, yeah. and they're still <laughs> my my emotions are horrifying sometimes. <laughs> so it's like um, I know for me, uh, God's had to like take my emotions over time and just be like, no, you don't get those. Here's new emotions. Mm. Um, well, that's good. And I know, I know how God's had to walk through that with me a lot. Um, how, oh, how for you, how has God had to come through for you in the midst of anxiety? Um, I, I love that you said uh, God is literally giving us new emotions. It was about, just to be totally vulnerable with you guys, I would say two years ago, I was on staff here, um, and I was experiencing like a lot of panic attacks on a regular basis. And... Um, Pastor Daniel, he wasn't Pastor Daniel yet, but he, back then he was just my buddy Daniel. He was somebody that I would talk with a lot about um, this kind of stuff. And he taught me to um, like specifically identify the things that are making me anxious. So not just saying, mm -hmm. God, I'm anxious, please help. But saying, God, I'm really anxious because this specific friendship seems on the rocks. And, and I don't know what I'm going to do without this person. And, and Daniel says like, if, if the kingdom of heaven is here and now, like if Jesus has taught us to pray for the realities of heaven to come to earth as they are in heaven, then God has, then to just say to God, like, God, I know in heaven, this anxiety that I'm feeling is not your ideal for me. And so I want that new reality that you have for me. If the kingdom of heaven is here and now, I want, I want like to, what's the non-anxious Tony look like in this situation? And so it is like just this way of like, letting God kind of supernaturally come through and give you a new like some feeling in the situation and that's weird that he does that that's that is fantastic um gosh I know I know for me I when I was when I was still in the army um you know in, in the midst of dealing with some really bad leadership and some really stressful mm -hmm. times and 
I'd come home, uh, there was one moment in particular, it was, I just signed out on leave to come home on vacation for two weeks. And it was like, I should be in my car driving home and I'm sitting there curled up in a ball on the mm. floor of my barracks room. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, God, what do I do now? Yeah. Cause I can't move. And he's like, you, you need to, I shouldn't be the only one you're reaching out. Mm. You need to reach out to other people, and you know. So I start texting, start texting one friend, and then another, and you know, asking for some support. And then I'm finally man able to manage. Okay, get the uniform off, civilian clothes yeah. back on, change gears in your head. Here's some new emotions. <laughs> yeah. What you just identified is so key because it's mm -hmm. it's it's two things that, like anybody experiencing anxiety needs to know mm -hmm. is the first thing that they're not alone mm -hmm. so reaching out to your community like christ says or two or more they're two or more gathered i'm there with you and so like the presence of god becomes even more feels even more real when you're mm -hmm. able to share an experience with somebody else and then the other thing is is like one step at a time so mm -hmm. like instead of thinking through your whole day of like having to drive through like get into the car and drive make the drive and like you have two weeks off and your routine's totally shot mm -hmm. like it's like okay I can put on clothes. I can do that right now. And then we'll figure out the rest after that happens. Like, Absolutely. <laughs> I, yeah, I relate to that a yeah. lot. Um, oh, fantastic. I have the same question twice. <laughs> um, what are... So in the midst of all this, um, I know for me, uh, unhealthy coping mechanisms. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that one needs to be identified. <laughs> um, I know for me, I'll lash out in anger mm. um i'll eat i'll eat really unhealthy yeah um i don't know what what uh what are unhealthy healthy coping <laughs> well definitely not food oh I got no that not, not at all <laughs> no, no like uh, stress eating is like mm -hmm. oh that is that is my big downfall and mm -hmm. in the past thank god this hasn't been as much of a struggle recently but in the past Pornography was mm -hmm. a big thing that I would struggle with, especially when I was anxious. Um, I also like, I retreat to fantasy like a mm -hmm. lot. Like I retreat to like, just like trying to create scenarios in my head where I, anything to avoid being present. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So like, yeah. I'll be thinking about the future and always planning for the next thing or dwelling on the past. Like, so just like any way to get me disengaged from mm -hmm. having to confront the uncomfortable feeling I'm experiencing, yep. I would say that's an unhealthy coping strategy. Even if it doesn't play out in you like necessarily sinning mm -hmm. or doesn't play out in you mistreating your body by eating badly, like just by not confronting the here and now, like you're still not coping <laughs> with like the thing that needs to be dealt with. Yes. I had my... um. I had a counselor say this to me once that like anxiety is a symptom and like if you are like having lots of migraines like mm -hmm. that's a symptom of something you need to get that checked out like it's your body letting you know mm -hmm. something is wrong and anxiety works in a very similar way like it is you letting you know something needs to be dealt with mm -hmm. and like it can be a prophet that speaks to you and speaks to the bigger things that need to be dealt with and so like now <laughs> like, I try to let my anxiety be a trigger that leads me to closer to Jesus and closer to like confronting stuff that I don't want to confront rather mm -hmm. than escapism. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. Um, so are you, let's hear you, you just touched a little bit about uh, healthy coping strategies. Mm. Um, I know it was like, I, I know for me, you know, sitting there praying, yeah. worshiping God works really, really well for me. I know that muscle's really big in my head, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, what are some other, I mean, that's really the tool in my toolbox yeah. that I use, but I mean, other, is there other stuff that you use? Or? <laughs> that one is, um, I think that the worshiping piece is something mm -hmm. that Pastor Dave really, really encouraged me with when mm -hmm. that stuff was taking place to me a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't as much like, my go-to mm -hmm. but in more recent these last couple of years it's definitely become like just turn on some worship music allow myself to focus on jesus and what he has to say to this moment mm -hmm. um i would say another like really healthy thing is um there's it sounds weird because i know there's like a lot of weird ways that you can take this but like 
mindfulness meditation mm -hmm. is super helpful. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what it is, is it's like, it's literally I have an app on my phone mm -hmm. that just tells me like, okay, hey, let's not focus any, on anything but your breath for the next five minutes and you're just gonna focus on your breathing. And, mm -hmm. and, and it, something happens in that time where like, if I just take five minutes to just stop and just focus on my breath and breathe slowly and kind of acknowledge where I'm at, it forces me to be present and then like, God, God doesn't exist in the future and he doesn't exist in the past. He's right here, right now. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm present, it forces me to take this stuff to God. Mm -hmm. um, so those, those three things like are the really big things of worship, just stopping and, and breathing and then like going to God with after I've had a chance to calm down a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's breathing definitely. I can just realize, you know, know for me a little bit is like re realize what's going on you know acknowledge, acknowledging holy cow my emotions are in a knot in my throat and I'm ready to yeah. scream at people <laughs> yeah. and they're done that quite a few times yes. <laughs> but it's like you know acknowledging that sitting down taking a breath unwinding for a sec mm. That's one of the reasons why I love my job so much now. Is it's like, you know, there's so much of just me alone taking a breath. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I think it's important to have chunks of that unhurried time. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Um, that's the end of my notes. That's it. So. <laughs> um, guys, like, I hope this was helpful for you. Like, we're, I mean, we're not experts in the area of anxiety. We're just two people who've gone through years of working through how to live like with this <laughs> but the cool thing is is like i say how to live with it but like jesus is super super faithful and even if like he didn't always take away the anxiety like it's not a magic trick like he's god he's got his own agenda for us it's always for our good but it's not that doesn't mean he's going to do what we want right away um, but even if it doesn't happen the way i want it right away like on the other side of the anxiety there's always like a treasure there's always like a oh that's what you were doing in me like at that time, okay, I get why I needed to wrestle with that for a little bit. And so just like take comfort in knowing that like the fear, anxiety that you might be feeling, totally normal. We relate to it. Other leaders in, in the church relate to it. Um, yeah. Do you want to pray like over yeah, our kids? Yeah, and just... definitely. Um, <laughs> God, I, I thank you for the time that we do get, God. I, I thank you for the chunks of unhurried time. I thank you that we're still able to in the midst of this craziness that's going on around us, I thank you for the chance to still be able to connect with people yes, Jesus. and connect with the people that we call family mm -hmm. in our church, God. God, bless what you've said through us. Mm -hmm. God, help us to go out and move. Help us to have some unhurried time. God, help us to figure out where you are in the midst of this. Yes, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Jeff, thank you so much for joining me with this. And guys, we love you, we miss you, and we can't wait to see you in person soon.